In this video, I'll be showing you how you can use the compositor to add effects really easily and quickly and end up going from an image like this to something more exciting, perhaps like this. Now, this video isn't for complete beginners. Do check out my complete beginners guide if you need to learn the basics. Links in the description to that. And you'll also find links to other great playlists on the channel and my detailed and comprehensive courses. And if written tutorials are more your style, then check out my Gumroad. So let's get started learning about the compositor. I have a very basic scene set up here, as you can see. I've got a monkey, some basic spheres and cubes, and they're all sitting on this big plane just here. And I've left the default light and camera where it is. And just to make things a little bit more interesting, I'll select the monkey. I'll press Control 2 to give it a subdivision surface modifier. So if I go across to my modifiers, you can see that adds it there. Incidentally, you can just press Add Modifier, type in Sub, and there's the subdivision surface just there. And I'll copy that subdivision surface to the spheres so I can select all the spheres first by holding down shift and left clicking, select the monkey last and control L is to link and I can copy modifiers. You can also find that under the object menu there, link transfer data and there's copy modifiers just there. I'll also right click and shade smooth. That's with all of them selected so they're nice and smooth. Now I have added some materials to this. So if I go to material preview mode, you can see these very basic materials here. If I go across to the rendered workspace, I've got my render engine set up as cycles. I've got my denoise enabled. That will enable faster rendering in the viewport and in the render just here. And I'm going to set a time limit as well to the render four seconds so it doesn't take too long. And in cycles, if I go to render preview mode, this is what my scene looks like currently. Incidentally, I have got an HDRI in the background. I'll just go through that quickly now. So in the shading workspace, I'll jump to cycles once again so you can see the finished result. For most objects, it's very basic materials, just to change in the metallic or the roughness to make it more shiny. I have given these cubes an emission, which is useful to show off certain aspects of the compositor. If I click on those, you can see it's just the principal BSDF once again, but I've gone down to the emission, changed the color to a nice ready color and put the strength at about 40. Lastly then, I did say I've got an HDRI in the background and you can see that there, that lights the scene. And to add that, you can go down to your shader editor, change from object to world, and just make sure that you've got an HDRI plugged into the background. You don't even need the texture coordinates there. As you can see, it's exactly the same with just the HDRI here in the background. And I'm using the abandoned greenhouse, which you can see on the side over here from Polyhaven. Okay, so I'll jump back to layout view quickly and just show you where my camera is positioned. So if I press zero on my numpad, that's my current position of the camera. And incidentally, you can press the camera button here to go to camera view and I'll lock it so that when I move it around, it moves like my viewport and I'll set up my render just there. Now, normally I would press render, but I'm just going to show you that if I go to the compositing workspace now, you should see something like this. If you don't, you're probably not in Blender 5 because in Blender 5, we've got a slight upgrade to the compositor. You'll start off by clicking a new composite just up at the top here, and you'll see the render layers there going into the outputs just here. And we can put some interesting effects in the middle here. So the render layer, if I click on that, that's our render. So when we press F12 or go up to the render tab just up here, render image, that's what this node will see. Now I haven't rendered my image, which is why you don't see anything in the background because I've got backdrop selected just up here. I can turn that off and on and you can see it's highlighted blue, so it's selected. So we should see the final render in the background, but I haven't actually pressed render yet. So I'll press F12 to render and it'll render out my scene. And that took four seconds to render, but it took another almost five seconds to do the denoising. And you can see the finished render there. And if I close this down, you can now see the render in the background. So that's important to note that you must render your image in order to see the final result in the background. I find having the render result in the background is a little bit distracting actually and gets in the way. You can press V to zoom out of your background image and Alt V is to zoom back in. But again, I don't tend to have it like this. I turn off the backdrop here and I open up a new window. So into the corner where my crosshairs are, click and drag to bring out a new window. And I change this one to the image editor. And in the drop down, I'll change to render result. So I'll actually see my render here and anything I put in here now will affect my render over here. Now it's worth pointing out that your render layers just here is very similar to the view layer properties just here. And you can actually add passes to your render layers. So if I, let's say, add a depth pass, you can see that just appears there, or I could use a mist pass and that would appear there. That's a little bit more depth than this beginner tutorial. So I'll turn those off and we just got the combined there and that's the output just there. But it's useful to know that you can add layers to your render and you can plug those layers into separate effects 
and therefore treat your render a bit more like a Photoshop file or something like that, where you can add effects to different layers. Okay, let's add some effects now. New to Blender 5, we have some effects down here to start us off. Let's start with Chromatic Aberration. So I'll click and drag to bring that in. You need to bring it to a blank space first, and then you can click and drag it over the noodle between the two in this space here and let go, and it will connect itself up like that. And you can mute this node. So if I press M, you can see the effects on the right hand side here. So this is without. And if I press M again, that unmutes it. And you can see a little bit of effect there. And you can change the factor. So we have lots of chromatic aberration like this or much less. So I'll add a little bit of that chromatic aberration in there. I'll zoom out just a touch. I'll select these nodes and bring them back. So G to grab, once I have those selected, oh, I want to select this point here. So select that, G to grab, move that over. And I want to put a new one in here so you can stack up the different effects. But before I add a new one, if I click on the chromatic aberration, you can double click on it and that will take you to all the nodes that are included to make up chromatic aberration. And it's a bit like going into edit mode. So you can tab in and out of edit mode. So if I, with that selected, tab into edit mode, or you can come up the top here and go back to your compositor nodes just there. And like I was saying, you can stack these up. So let's add some sensor noise now, bring that in. You can't drag it straight in the middle there. You have to drag it in and then place it in like so. And I'll just zoom into the image a bit so you can see the effect that has. So there's luminance noise, and this is a certain type of noise. You can see all that noise there. I'll bring that one down and there's chroma noise, slightly more subtle that one. And you can actually tick this so it's animated noise if you want it. I'll bring up the luminance noise a bit so we can see a bit of a noisy image there. And you can bring these in and have some fun with these and see for yourself exactly what they do. If I bring in the tune image is the last one, I'll just bring that in and drag that in there. This is quite a nice one for increasing the contrast, for example, for my YouTube thumbnail, that's always a classic. Increase the contrast, clarity, gives it this really sharp look like this. And you can have loads of fun with that as you can see there. It's a little bit over the top, I would say, so I'll bring that down even for a YouTube thumbnail. I'll give it just a little bit of contrast about there, let's say. Now you're not only limited to the effects down here, you can go up to the add menu up the top here and add in lots of different nodes. My go-to nodes are under filter and then there is a glare node just here. So I'll select that and drag that in and you can see the glare instantly added. That's why I added some emission objects so you can see the real effects of glare, adding a glow to them, but it does affect the brightest parts of your image as well, depending on the threshold. And it's on streaks at the moment, which is quite nice, but I'll bring the strength right down. Even there, that seems a little bit too much. So I'll bring it down to 0 0.03. And we just got a little bit of streaks coming out of these areas here. And that's quite fun. There's other types of glare. So if I copy this one with Shift D to duplicate, bring that over slightly and insert that in there. I can change this to something like the fog glow. That's quite nice as well. And again, if I mute these nodes, you can see what they do. So M to mute and M to unmute. We can hardly see any difference there. So I'll have to bring this one up and you can see a little bit of glow coming out of our emissive cubes just here. So if I mute that and then unmute it, you can see the effects of that. So that's the basics of the compositor window just here. And note, you can stack these up. Do be aware though, the more you stack them up, the slightly harder your computer will have to work. And therefore there might be a delay in rendering. And that's quite important because what you can do now with the compositing is you can go back to let's say layout view. And under the render properties, just at the top here, the shading properties, you've got an option down the bottom here, which is compositor. And I can enable the compositor in something like the camera. It's probably best to just have it when you're in camera view. And now when I look through my camera, I can see the final composite and I can actually move my camera around, although that's causing a problem at the moment because there's so many nodes on my compositor, but it's not too bad actually. It took a moment to start off with and now I can move around fairly freely and it updates as you can see there. You can even change this to have it always on. So whether you're in the camera or not, so I'll come out of camera view, you can see those changes just there. So that's really helpful that we can see the compositor and the results in our viewport. Now, lastly, if I go up to render and instead of this time saying render image, which is F12, I'm going to go to view render. You'll actually see the results of the composite in here because this is exactly the same. If I go to the compositing workspace and then bring back that window, you can see this is render view just here. So it's exactly the same as our render result just here. And I can go across the image and save this image and it will save with its composite. And this will work if you render out an animation as well. So hopefully that's given you a good introduction to the compositor. Let me know if you've got any questions in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.